Wow, so much to consider when custom designing a tiny home. I had no idea, no idea. I thought like, how complicated can a tiny home be? A couple rooms, some windows, a door, a bathroom, we're good to go. <laughs> Not so fast. I came up with 10, 10 considerations when custom designing your tiny home. Some things you'd like, maybe like to consider. And today, I am going to share those with you. Hope you'll join me. Linda here, Serene and Simple Life, here in a Rocky Pine Retreat. Tiny home cabin. I like to think of it as a cabin, and actually it's called a country cabin. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the five-part series that ran the last Sunday in March and all the way through April. I did up close and personal of the entryway, kitchen area, living, uh, sleeping, loft, bathroom, closet. <laughs> I know I got into quite a few um, miscellaneous details and a few bunny trails. And if you haven't seen the series, I encourage you to go back in the playlist. There's a little tab at the top of each video that says playlist. Click on that. And there are tons of shows organized by topic in there. And one of them happens to be Tiny Home Tour. Well, today... I want to share with you top 10 top considerations, uh, things that you might want to consider if you're looking into uh, designing, purchasing a tiny home cabin. Of course, I have notes, helps me to stay on track, if nothing else. I don't want to forget any points either. Um, and this is in no particular order. It's just, I kind of started from front to back, but might be mixed up just a little bit in between. So, And you might want to get out a piece of paper and a pen and take some notes. Or if you're watching this on your smart TV, take some notes on your phone. Okay, with no further ado... Number one, the porch size. What size of porch do you want? Now I covered much of sizes and different information within the tiny home tour. So that's why one of the reasons I encourage you to go back, but I will from time to time, I will mention some of the sizes here. Um, considerations, what kind of porch furniture do you have? Or what kind of porch furniture do you think you're going to purchase or be gifted? <laughs> company. How much company do you have? Do you have a family of six that comes visit you on a regular basis? Or is it just you? Um, or is it going to be very random on occasion and you don't really need to consider that? So that would be number one, is your porch size. And alongside that, do you want it screened or not? My absolute was screened. The less bugs, the better. I like the look of an open porch, and I know you can get blinds and pull those all down, and that's really cool too. I decided to go with a screen porch and just leave it, leave it open, no blinds. Mine is a 12 by 6 porch. I don't have company on a regular basis. 
and it is pretty much just me. So that was my decision on the porch. Number two is kitchen cabinets versus a window. Now, what do I mean by that? When I first designed, <clears throat> worked on designing uh, this tiny cabin, I didn't think I wanted a window above my countertop. Well, God knew, he knew I needed a window and wanted a window. And that's quite an interesting story in itself, which is another series with the build on how that window came to be. Because I had initially said no window. And windows are, at this particular time, hard to get. So it was a huge blessing. And I ended up with a window above the counter, thank the Lord. So that would, um, and it is an 18 by 24. It's a double hung window. All my other windows are sliders. But this one was double hung because it's what they had. I got really blessed. Number three is, do you want a full stove with an oven or just a cooktop? I pretty much knew out of the get-go that I, uh, just right out of the gate, that I wanted a, just a cooktop. I talked to a friend and she said, you know, convection ovens are awesome. And I know that I bake very little, it, you know, back in the day, it was a pizza, uh, lasagna once in a while, you know, maybe some brownies, but, or some cookies. Um, but basically I don't use an oven. So I was like, you know what? I would rather have cabinets than an oven taking up room. So that is another consideration. My cooktop is 11 by 20 and a half, 11 by 20 and a half. And you also have to think about positioning. Believe it or not, these are things that I had conversations with the builder. He wanted to know, where do you want this cooktop? And well, I was, I knew I wanted it next at the end of the L shape kitchen. Again, go back to the playlist. I won't continue to say that, but I'm not going to belabor these things. And I decided I wanted it next to the refrigerator, but how close? I decided the closer to the refrigerator, the more counter space I had on the left-hand side. And we're talking only four or five inches, but four or five inches gives me an opportunity to set a bowl beside the sink. So decide if you want it in centered or if you want it one side or the other side how far back, how big, those kinds of things. All right, number four is the size of the windows. I'm telling you, this was the hardest decision for me to make until it, it clicked and the light bulb came on. I started off with three by three windows. And I know some of you watched a video where I was at a rest area and I cut out a template with eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper, a 36 by 48 window. And I also used string and I think I had some yarn and I, I stared down, I put this on the cement and I kept staring down at it. And I'm like, this looks huge, a 36 by 48. My friend encouraged me to get that. I was like, oh don't you think that's too big? She's like, no, you want to bring the outdoors in. And that sealed the deal for me. You know, the more light, the more outside, the better. Because most tiny homes that I have seen have tiny windows to go with tiny homes. And again, that's why I, one of the reasons why I think this is more a cabin look than a tiny home. And I actually had, um, somebody come into the house, a technician, and he was like, wow, this is just like my cabin that we go when we hunt up in Montana. And I was like, yes, that's just what I, that was the, that was the feel. And he validated that feeling of, of cabin. You probably, many of you probably see it too, but size of windows. Yes, this is, um, uh, you know, certified as a tiny home, but um, I've got 
big cabin windows. My uh, slider window in the loft is a 22 by 54. And I also chose windows without the grids. I didn't even know what grids were. <laughs> I was like, what's grids? I don't, can't recall ever having grids, but I never had to make that decision either. Well, we owned a home in San Antonio that we uh, custom designed and, and built when I was married. Doesn't matter. I chose to not have that, the windows cut up um, for more big picture sight. I like grids. Most of the tiny homes around here have grids. So I don't know, a future build, I may consider grids. I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not sold out one way or the other at this point. I have to continue living here for a while to really uh, get an understanding of everything too. All right, number five is an open floor plan versus a separate bedroom. I may in the future do a video on this because I could talk on this a while, but I knew out of the gate that I wanted an open floor plan. Open floor plans are contemporary. I feel like they're um, cozy and comfortable for a single person, um, even for a married couple. You know, if you don't mind each other's company, <laughs> Hopefully he has hobbies. Um, yeah. My mom uh, joked around. She said when she, when my dad retired, she got twice the husband and half the paycheck. I can't imagine having someone just sitting in here all day with me. But um, you work it out, right? I've got a porch. We've got a yard. Uh, we've got a patio in the wintertime. I don't know. If you have hobbies and you like each other's company and being around each other all day, um, and maybe the older I get, I'll, I'll change my mind and I won't mind having someone around all the time if God presents that, um, that for me in my life. Anyways, floor plan, I, love, I just love open. There's just so much you can do with open. Um, and I showed you a lot of that visual in the tour. All right, next, and I'll, one more thing with the open floor plan, I don't know, like I said, I may do a video later, is I felt, I feel like it's really, I'm not moving from room to room by myself, and maybe you already get that with what I was saying. You know, I don't go, okay, now I'm going to go in my bedroom, and I'm going to watch TV, and then I'm going to go to bed, and in the morning, I'm going to come out in the living room, and there's nobody there, and then I, uh, okay, and, uh, you know, someone comes by, where are you? Oh, I'm back here in the bedroom. I don't know. I, it's just, to me, it's just an, a good emotional, mental feeling to have open floor space. And I think you just really have to think about that and, um, and experience it too. It's awesome. Number six is a loft or no loft. I went back and forth with this. And I thought, you know what? The grandkids, grand sweet peas come by. I want somewhere where they can just go up there and, and hide out like a little cabin of their own. Now, I don't know, you know, so far that hasn't happened. So <laughs> I don't know if, you know, this summer, who, who knows? Only God knows, you know, visitors and in using the loft. Right now, I, I showed you it's a decorative space for me, but I did go back and forth and then I decided, yeah, I want a loft. What, you know, no harm in having a loft and it can be a great storage space if nothing else. And I didn't want to junk it up, like just put containers up there and as soon as you walk in, that's your focal point. So that was my, not my uh, desire, although I know you could probably put something across and, and cover the loft area too, or have baskets lined up and have everything behind, and that would be cool. So do you want it for storage, decorative, sleeping quarters? And mine is three and a half feet high. Um, this was de That was definitely custom, because they don't, in this size of a home, which is a 12 by 34, including the six foot porch inclusive in that, um, I don't, they don't normally put a loft in this size. So anyways, with that comes the size of the cabin, the width. Do you want eight feet, 10 feet, 12 feet, 14 feet? I think 12 feet is max on the road, 
before you have to get a special permit. I could be wrong about that. It could be 14. This, like I said, is a 12 feet. I really considered 10 feet too. And there's days that go by where I'm like, could I shrink this in two feet? And I'm happy the distance from the television, how I display things. If you don't have as much to display, you know, the little accent tables and the little cutesy things that I have, maybe you don't need uh, 12 feet. Or maybe you need 14 feet because your furniture is bigger. Think it through. Think it through. What do you have now that you know is an absolute that you want to put in your tiny cabin? I only had four pieces that were my absolutes. And I knew how I was going to be sleeping, so which I shared with you. So um, that is just something um, you consider. Um, I, I did go, initially I was a 12 by 30 after I was sold on the 12 feet. I was doing a what 12 by, yeah, 12 by 30. And my friend encouraged me. She's like, Linda, get the extra feet. Go with a 12 by 34. And I am, yeah, I am, I get confused between 32 and 34. My brain wants to say 32. I am really happy that I have the extra four feet. Because um, when, you, you know, I showed you the whole entire open house tour at the end my um next to my final show was showing you the entire home not all broken down into different parts and uh, you can see anyways these again these are think it throughs and sleep ons number eight is do you want a washer and dryer and if so where are you going to put it are you going to put it in the bathroom are you going do you want it in a hallway um, do you want it in the kitchen area? Where do you want your washer and dryer? I knew out of the gate I wanted it in the bathroom. And I was hoping to have gotten a full size. We didn't have the space with the loft, so I ended up getting an RV size, which is pretty near a full size in my, and I'm only doing, I'm not doing major laundry. <laughs> like my daughter does. So, I mean, I'm not doing sheets and towels and clothing, all sorts of things. I mean, I may do laundry once every week and a half or two weeks. I just, I just don't do laundry. But I'm really happy that I don't have to go out to a laundromat. Now, when I was a nomad, I had some good conversations and enjoyed going to the laundromat because it was something to do for the day. If it was a really hot day, I could be in the laundromat. If it was a really cold day, I could be in the laundromat. Now, I'm glad I don't have to spend the time or the gas money and go to the laundromat. Just saying. Giving you some food for thought as we go. Number nine, shower, bathtub, both, one or the other. I knew shower only. I don't take baths since I was little. Baths is just not something I'm interested in. I like stepping in a bathtub to, in, to get into a shower. I don't know why. Maybe that's because of growing up. We did have a shower in the basement too. Uh, you know, but we had the shower tub in the actual house. My shower is the the whole bathroom is seven feet ten and a half inches by six feet that's just the bathroom the window is 24 by 36 and the shower itself is 36 inches i know i'm repeating for those of you who took the time to watch my uh, series and i really appreciate your support and sharing it with other people share it Please share the link, share the channel so that the channel will grow and it will bless other people. That, that's the bottom line. All right. And then number 10 is the closet. Do you want a closet? Do you want a little broom closet? Do you want an actual closet? I wasn't 100% that I was going to get a shed, which I didn't get a shed. Many of you have suggested <laughs> that I need a shed. Um... I told you why I didn't need a shed. I showed you in the series, all that good stuff. 
but I wanted a closet because I like clothes. I like hanging clothes. I like hanging dresses. I only have a few. I opened up my closet and really showed you everything. Um, but I also wanted it for storage and I wasn't like Christmas decorations. I don't know about putting them up in the loft, you know, and it all being all crowded up there. And again, I go back to if the grand sweet peas or if a friend comes by and they want to be in the loft, now I've got it cluttered. So I decided I definitely wanted a closet. My closet is a three feet by six feet. Um, you know, same length as the bathroom and three feet across. So we've got the seven uh, feet, ten and a half, and then we've got the three by six, and then you need room for the studs and the wall in between. So that's where the 12 feet total comes in. I don't know that I could have figured that out <laughs> before. <laughs> okay. So now that you've considered those 10 things, I don't know if you need to consider this one or not. This is a miscellaneous. My panel box is 200 amps. It's not, it's a, I'm in ground, <clears throat> it's not hookups. All right, so now what after these considerations? Now you've got all these things in your mind, everything laid out, maybe bullet points of what you want. Well now it's time to design your floor plan. This was literally my initial floor plan. I don't know if you wanna stop and read up close and personal here, but I have three by three windows in here. I color coded, the windows are in green over here, little slats. I used the um, grid paper and then I like the l shape um, kitchen the stackable washer and dryer back here and the closet and the shower and how I positioned everything. This was my uh, brand new first attempt. Then went into, Linda, this needs to be on a bigger piece of paper. So here we are, big piece of paper. Pretty much the same, only a few new notes. And now I'm going into the, um, the uh, 28 feet size, where on this one I had 12 by 24 here at the top, the specs. So this is pretty messy. This is getting a little bit clearer. I actually have here my little range top, which has three burners. Well, I ended up doing two burners. So a lot of different things changed along the way. Um, I even have by this window that I have three by three. And now I do have uh, the um, three by four windows, but I have a table and two chairs there. Well, I don't have a table and two chairs. I marked having uh, a little table, an accent table that I knew that I owned out of storage. I put it between the two windows. I even asked them how much um, space do I have from the window ledge to the floor so that my uh, furniture would fit and or my little accent tables that I really like. And I, you know, drew a little picture of a toilet and the sink. <laughs> I think you get the idea here. Okay, and then, you know, where the hinges are on the, are gonna go on the doors. How, how are the doors gonna swing? That would be something else you need to add to this. Um, the doorknob on the right side, hinges on the right inside. My friend helped me with that. Um, yeah, where your yeah, where your hinges, your doorknob, um, a microwave shelf. I even put you know, which is above the convection oven. Now had to let them know that. Then lastly, we come to where they give you the complete drawing that you have to sign off on. So there you have it. This is Mennonite built. This is Hilltop Structures. I've mentioned them before. They are fantastic, and I um, highly recommend that you go to their website and check it out if you're interested in them. I am going to let you know now, and I hope no one will ask me because I'm going to refer you back to the video. <laughs> I am not going to be quoting uh, prices or providing information on what I paid. 
I think that is really personal information. Um, and you can go to the website and you can ballpark what I, what I paid. I have a lot of investment in here and, uh, I'm not going to put out a price at this time. What I, you know, what I paid for, it. you know, I may go to sell it someday. So, but there are all kinds of details on the website. There's photos, prices, there's other options that you might want to consider like batten boards, siding, uh, French doors. Um, those are things they, they offer, um, different types of ins insulation. Uh, they have log siding, they have interior trim, accent colors. I just believe for the integrity of the, com uh, the company, um, that if you're interested, that you call them or email them. I would hate to quote a price, even, you know, I feel that it's personal, but quote you a price, and now prices have skyrocketed, and you're going to be like, okay, Linda paid this, but they're pay charging me this. And so that's not good. It's their business, and it's their business to give you a quote, too, and they're awesome. So call Tyler in customer service. Um, tell them that Linda sent you and from Serene and Simple Life and they don't give a referral, but I don't know. They might enjoy knowing. And uh, I guess lastly is, well, not quite lastly, but they are 8 to 12 months out right now. I don't know if that's going to turn into a year and a half by the time you call them or if it's going to only be six months. I have no idea. Last I talked to them, which was a couple months ago, they were eight to 12 months out is what they're quoting. Uh, they were six to eight months out when I ordered my cabin April last year. They also have nice brochures on there. All This is a park model RVIA cabin and they come with a 12 month warranty. Um, they come with standard spray and foam insulation in the ceilings and walls, and they have R13 fiberglass and floors have 3HT. Uh, they've been inspected by RVIA inspectors, and they meet all the code for recreational park trailers. Uh, they'll have RVI seals and are equipped with all safety equipment and safety labels. Uh, there's metal tie-down tie strapping that's included, but insulation might be extra. And their, their goal is to offer you a quality product at a reasonable price. So there is the advertising. Um, they come on a heavy-duty steel frame. Um, once on site, the axles or wheels can be removed if desired. And, you know, you're responsible for to have concrete strip footers. And they go within a certain mileage. They will set you up. Um, our crew can block up if concrete blocks are on site. Da-da-da-da-da. All kinds of cool stuff. These were on all the windows. You know how I like signs. American windows. How cool is that? I love it. Anyways, that's it for the Babbling Brook today. I really hope you enjoyed this and got some good information if you're considering a, um, a tiny cabin. Along with when I said about the floor plans, is I confided in a friend to share my floor plan with and in case I didn't see something or miss something. And there was a few things. I didn't think about the swing of the door. I didn't think about the size of the windows. I didn't think about having extra length. Um, I was able to walk through with my friend who gave me a lot of time. Um, thank you so much, Judy. Um, thank you from the bottom of my heart. She gave me a lot of time and consideration, even when it came to the shower head and that needed to be changed. She was like my wind beneath my wings, that that was definitely something that needed changed. And so with that, 10 considerations if you're going to be um, putting a, a tiny home floor plan together. Please put in the comments if, if you're going to be doing that. I would love to hear from you. Um, that your, you know, and what your time frame is, um, you know, there is a possibility, and I have sprinkled this a couple times, that I am interested in buying land, God willing. And if I do that, I will be putting this tiny cabin up for sale uh, probably in September. So you might want to email me, <laughs> my girlfriend. 
<laughs> oh, I love you. She said, Linda, you're going to have a price war. So I don't know, you know, with eight to 12 months out and some people would just really love to have a tiny cabin, you know, and then I would be back on the road. I would be buying land and rebuilding. Now that is not in stone. It's just an idea that I have right now. So anyways, that's about it for today. Love you guys. Thank you for your thumbs up, for sharing, for your support, for your care. I appreciate all of you very much. And um, I appreciate you being with me on this journey. So blessings in your day. And joy in your discoveries of what you need and what you want. Well, now, three more things, but they're quick things. My friend recommended I get a toilet that was a bit higher. She said, Linda, you might not need that now, but you'll be glad you have it later. I thought it was very, very helpful. She's a designer of homes. She knows what she's talking about. Secondly, I ordered my washer and dryer months ahead of time, months. So don't design, don't order, and then procrastinate if you have special appliances that you're gonna order. They, the company provides appliances also. So I don't know if they, they put the hookups in. I don't think they do the washer and dryer, but just saying, if you want a washer and dryer right away when you move in. And then lastly, I have a nice little folder. Y'all might think of this too, but I have lots and lots of stuff. Some that it's really not valid now, but as I was journeying and I would uh, be looking at, uh, you know, I started off thinking about looking at sheds, um, Graceland portable sheds. And I have this in here. I don't know if I ever go back prices in 2019. I mean, that's, that should be thrown away. But it's a good reference material. It's just my nice little folder keeping everything together. So, hey, if you, this is in your future, one of the first things you might want to put in this is the notes you took today from Serene and Simple Life, right?